What up, Sleepy? Hey, Donnie, you ready to get wet and fishy? How can I? Looks like you left the wife at home. You disgusting animal. How the hell are you? Doing pretty well, despite your never-ending persecution. Ha <laughs> ha, we'll get you eventually. Where's O'Byron? Oblicky should have been here first. It was his idea to come look at fish, and now I'm standing here wasting time with Joe Blow. Bite my tip. I totally had time to get ice cream. What's happening, fish friends? There he is, what's up? About time we don't have all day, you know. Chew on my chocolate cheeks, Donald. I saw you walk in when I pulled up. Did you at least bring me ice cream? Joe, I'm not responsible for your ice cream addiction. But if I don't fulfill my ice cream addiction, the crack addiction takes over. Suck it up, Tweaky Joe. I'm sure we won't be here for that long. Now that's what I always say going into the pet store, but then I end up spending hours in here. There's so much cool stuff, so you always spend a little too much time in these stores. It's like a casino or a trap house. I do enjoy it, like a mini zoo, but slightly more humane. I love my fish so fucking much. Probably because your fish don't attack your secret service like your man-eating dog. Commander is a good boy. The media destroyed his image. Well, do you guys like this place? A lot better than your standard pet store. This place isn't too shabby, unlike the White House. Before I pimp that bitch up, your interior decorating is dog shit, but this place is bussin'. Chain pet stores make me sick. It really all depends on who's running the store, but the big corporations like Petco and PetSmart allow for some horrible conditions. Yeah, their fish are often overpriced and live short lives. It's much better to buy from a local store or with some online sellers. So what are we looking to buy today? I got some taxpayer dollars burning a hole in my pocket. I think I've had my 100 gallons cycled for long enough. I have some plants and snails going, so I'm picking out a few fish. I love it when a tank comes together. I have a few of my own as well. I got a 300-gallon African cichlid tank in the living room, and then a 500-gallon coral reef tank in the shitter, and the monster fish pond in the basement. That's pretty crazy. I have a big fish tank with a bunch of goldfish and other random fish that looked cool. Oh my god, you're one of those guys? Chill out, Donald. This hobby is for everyone, and there's no right way to do it. There is definitely a wrong way to do it. And he's doing it. Fuck off, my goldies are living lavish. Although that's not what I would do, it doesn't mean he shouldn't. Couldn't be me. Are you doing freshwater or saltwater? I'm going tropical freshwater. Tropical fruit bubblicious. Freshwater can be cool, but nothing beats a coral reef tank. Too much work, too expensive. It's barely any work and your Chinese money can pay for it. It's barely any work because you probably have someone come in and do maintenance on all your tanks. I will not admit that because Joe will probably indict him for taking care of Trump fish. Enough of this malarkey. I don't control this indictment shit. If I did, I wouldn't be indicted right now. It's just proceeding so far, Joe. Nothing better than a big old freshwater tank in my mind. The maintenance is really low for the amount of entertainment and relaxation you can get out of it. Plus, the fish are less expensive for the most part. Yeah, true that. I had a Finding Nemo tank once, but my clownfish died and I got clinical depression. Well, there's plenty of fish in the sea and also in this store. I'm loving all these options. I could do a couple angels and some neon tetras. Sounds lovely. Basic, bitch. What's wrong with that, Donnie? Neon tetras are so common, I'm surprised pet stores aren't selling them as feeders. I've seen a million fish tanks with neons. Shut your Cheeto lips, neons are a classic. Sounds to me like we're going to have to settle this with a tier list. Holy shit, are we going to rank every single fish? Well, that would be impossible in one video. This could be a mini-series. I'm down with that, but only if we get some love on this one, so make sure to like the video and comment suggestions of fish if we missed your favorites. Is this just any fish we want to rank? We should just start with fresh water and stick to fish you would normally have access to in a pet store. Very good, let's get started. As always, we need to set a precedent for these tiers. We are ranking these fish based off looks, ease of care, price, availability, behavior, and even their role in an aquarium. Before we start, I want to mention that you should do your own research on pH, temperature, hardness, and space for each fish species that you want to add into your aquarium. This initial research will save you money and heartache. The water in your fish tank may be perfect for one species of fish and deadly for another. That's facts, but certain fish will definitely earn higher spots on the list for being more adaptable too. Some fun names. What's the difference between the tiers? S tier is easy. These are the starfish of any aquarium. I thought we were doing fresh water. There's no fresh water, Patrick. It's a play on words, Joe. S tier is simply the best fish for your aquarium. A tiers are still awesome, but might be lacking in one category or another. B tier has more 
going for them than not, but has some drawbacks. C tiers for fish that people still buy, but their pros are pretty equal to their cons. Ha <laughs> ha, deficient, beneficial. Another play on the words? No, those are puns. Oh, I'm guessing deficient has more negatives in keeping these than positives. Exactly. And then we have F tier. Flush? That's pretty brutal. Perhaps. I guess I'll come right out and say you shouldn't just flush live fish. Yeah, you should hit them in the head real hard before you do. You're a fucking monster. No, 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 no. It was just a funny F word having to do with fish. Do not commit racially charged fish murder. There's no laws against the fish, bro Obama. I guess laws can't always dictate morality. Let's rank some fish. Where do we start? I think we should start with the most common kept fish in the world, the betta fish. Everybody loves a family betta fish in the kitchen. Betta fish are pretty cool, but people putting them in tiny bowls makes it cringe. They're fine in there. They don't need a lot of space. That's highly debatable. One thing that's not debatable is people have been abusing the fighting fish for over a thousand years. A bunch of Asian Michael Vicks had a pretty profitable animal fighting business, though, you gotta admit. I think it's a little bit different with dogs. I don't really give a shit if dudes want to get together and make a couple fish fight. It's a slippery slope, Donald. Next thing you know, it's people fighting to the death for bets. Don't worry, Dana keeps saying he won't do death matches. We can make a fighting fish tier list later. Where do they rank as pets? Well, unfortunately, their violent ancestry makes it difficult to keep them with others. They got the bloodlust. Not always. There's a lot of betas that won't even hurt a shrimp in their space. And then there's other ones that fight the plants. Yeah, it's a mixed bag. But the beta excels in almost every other category. They're kept in such small spaces because they can survive through those conditions with adaptations to their hostile environment. They are able to breathe oxygen from the air, so water quality doesn't kill them as fast, making it easy to transport and keep them alive in bad conditions. They are unmatched in ease of care and availability as well as cost if you're at the low end. Like 10 bucks will get you a nice one. At the end of the day, you should give your beta plenty of space and a heater so it can not only survive, but thrive. A 10 gallon aquarium is cheap and plenty of space for a beta. I prefer 20 gallon rimless for beta tanks. Those are much more expensive, but I can't argue with the result. When done right, the beta is the single best centerpiece fish, especially in a planted setup. The more expensive betas, like the placat, are some of the most vibrant fish you can keep. Their beauty is matched by few in any aquarium the Ivanka of fish. So many different shapes and colors makes it hard to find a favorite. It's like looking at all the flavors of ice cream. So they're pretty much perfect in every single way except behavior. As long as you can get around the male betas need to dominate its rivals, usually they'll be peaceful. If you pair them with smaller, faster fish or fish that stick to the bottom, the beta may not feel the need to kill them. Then again, you might get one that thinks the fish tank is a battle royale game. That's pretty rough for planning an aquarium. It's hard to imagine a better fish in a community tank without worrying if you purchase the psycho killer or not. It's almost always trial and flush. I know one trick for that. If you're buying a beta from a pet store, they usually come in a little cup so you can hold that cup up to the other fish in the store and see if the beta is aggressive toward them. That might tell you your fighting fish is chill or that it won't survive much longer. Yeah, not perfect. But at the end of the day, you could always go with female betas who are much less aggressive and can be kept in groups themselves. Most people refer to this as a beta sorority. That's what I call the DNC nowadays. So where do we land? I'm at starfish. They should 100% fall into A tier for their semi-murderous nature. It's actually a really close one, but I'll have to agree with Donald. There are ways around it, but you know when you're buying a beta that it's capable of extreme aquatic violence. That's not an awful placement. You eventually move on from betas as you get deeper into the hobby. Like what? Like goldfish. That's not how that works. Okay, Joe, let's cover goldfish and koi. Whoa, 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 why are we clumping koi with shitfish? Don't call them shitfish. You're gonna make me violent. Take it easy. Koi and goldfish are basically the same. Sometimes you can't even tell the difference if they're the same size. It's all in the barbels. Koi have barbels and goldfish don't. Right on, Joe. You can get a variety of colors from either species. Maybe that's true for the low-end koi, but there's no goldfish on this planet like the high-end Japanese koi. I've seen some insane koi ponds at billionaires' houses, and those things are crazy. I think they were called sanki koi. They are something special. But I don't think anyone wants to spend tens of thousands of dollars on fish. 
Not to mention, you need an entire pond to house even a goldfish. No way, dude. They can be in a fish tank. Maybe when they're small, but common goldfish can reach two feet long. They don't get that big. That's because all yours died young. Y'all are spewing malarkey at rates unmatched since the last election. The little pudgy guys do not get that big. Those Danny DeVito-looking things are dumb as fuck. The result of breeding in favor of defects. The Aranda goldfish are funny looking, but they still do get pretty large. Even at a max of eight or nine inches, they are pretty girthy, which is one of the reasons that people like Donnie think these are dirty fish. In reality, they probably are cleaner than most fish, but are so large that fish tanks with goldfish get dirty quickly. They aren't worth the amount of shit they produce. Simple as that. Goldfish have more spunk than any fish in my book. You're just jealous that you'll never be as orange as a goldfish. Where do we land? Flush it. Best fish out there. Joe, I'm going to have to bring you down to earth. No matter the species, goldfish and koi are best suited in a pond. Outside, you get all sorts of concerns, like weather and predators. Their color isn't anything crazy, but they are extremely peaceful and easy to care for. I'm going to say C-tier. Not bad, but they have some issues. I'm ride or die with my goldies. I don't care what anyone says. There's way worse fish out there. I can think of one that you can find in almost every pet store, the rosy red minnow. Here's a fish that even Joe can outlast. Whenever you buy these, at least one or two die before you even get home. They're pretty good feeder fish, but that's about it. I wouldn't even say that. I usually go for the bulk goldfish. Bastard! Yeah, they always turn into bass turds, peacock bass to be precise. The rosy minnow is commonly kept as feeders and rarely kept as anything else. They are a commercialized version of the North American fathead minnow. Great bait, but this isn't the fishing tier list. There's absolutely nothing interesting about keeping them except for watching them get devoured. That's rough. They are deaf worse than goldfish, though. The color is mid at best, but you don't need to worry about tank mates because they don't have the means of hurting anything, just like North Korea. All around a waste of space. Maybe a little slept on, but usually there's no worse option at the pet store. That's why they're like 10 cents each. That was before, thanks to Biden, they cost at least a quarter. There's a reason they're that cheap. F tier fish. Couldn't agree more. It's not like they try to be F tier, they just don't know any better. A much better minnow is the white cloud minnow. They are much hardier, more active, and have stunning coloration. I wouldn't feed that to my big fish. I don't see this kind as much. Why aren't they more popular? Mainly because they are more of a cold water species, only being able to withstand maximum temps of about 70 degrees, which is on the very low end for most tropical fish. But on the bright side, you usually don't need a heater for them, and they are very hardy in the right water temps. Those look awesome. They could live with my goldies. I will say they are interesting. Looking like a little trout. They school pretty well, too. A great choice. Are they S-tier? I don't think so. It's a bit tougher to find tank mates with these ones. And the smaller a fish is, the more tank mates you'll want. Plus, they seem a little tougher to find. You may need to look online. In all other areas, they excel, though. You can even breed them, as long as you have tiny live food and a place to hold eggs like moss. I love little baby fish. Please don't love them too much. I'm thinking A-tier. Sounds like a great fish for beginners and Joe. I've got more experience keeping fish than anyone alive. I'm with you, Donnie. What's next? We gotta rank the second best aquarium fish behind goldfish. Where are my guppies at? All right, Joe, let's do guppies and endlers. Meh, pretty small. I feel like I gotta squint to see them. Just like your tiny hands. At least I don't have a tiny wiener. Cap, nobody's packing here but Obamaconda. Well, at least my wiener works. Mine works just like I do, with the right balance of medication. Accurate. As for the guppies, I can think of no better option in terms of value. They may only be an inch or two long, but there are endless combinations of patterns and colors. Pretty much any color you can think of. It's hard to have a favorite color. It's better to have either one of your favorite type or a mix of a bunch. In a few months, you have a new generation of guppies with insane color combos. There is no easier fish to breed than guppies. They are known as live bearers because they give birth to live young. Females can produce up to 50 live young at a time, and they will breed as long as there's a male and female. Sometimes the fry will get eaten, but if there's plants or cover in the tank, 
than a few will always make it to adulthood. This is one of the only fish that can get out of control in your tank. You think you're just buying a few guppies, but then you have a swarm of them in a couple months. Good problems to have. Worst comes to worst, and you can just find someone on Facebook or Craigslist to take some spare guppies. You might actually make some money if you have some nice colors on them. Like I really want to talk to some weirdo off the street. You could always just get a slightly bigger fish to eat all the babies. There's a special place in hell for people like you. Even with a bigger fish gobbling around there, will still be room for babies to grow up. What about endlers? Endlers are pretty much the exact same fish, but even smaller than the guppies. Where do we rank these tiny fucks? There's no doubt these are an S-tier fish. The only problem is you gotta pick tank mates small enough to not eat your adult-sized guppies. It's worth it once you got a little community of gups going. They also don't school very well, so they're all up in everyone's business. Guppies can do no wrong. They will almost always be the fish that gets bullied in the tank. Any negatives are so negligible. This is one of the best fish to keep for sure. I would highly recommend them for kids too. Undeniable starfish. Fine, but you might need a magnifying glass to see the colors in full. Why don't we stay on live bearers and talk about Molly's platies and sword tails? I'm looking for Molly, Molly, Molly. Three different species? How can we rank them all at once? Because they're basically the same thing. They're all just big guppies. Instead of an inch or two, these guys are two or three inches and bulkier like a goldfish. Are they better than guppies? I wouldn't say that. They are not as colorful, and they have a knack for eating most, if not all, of the fry they produce, so breeding them is more difficult. Since they are less colorful and larger than guppies, you can have less of them in the tank, so you'll have less fun keeping them too. Sounds like a downgrade. True, but it's good to have some variety if you already have guppies. And they can keep your guppies population in check. Sounds like a tier to me. Uh, I'm with you, Donnie. What should we do now? I think it's time to talk Tetris. Take it away, Donnie. In my mind, there's four different types of tetra. The neons, the royals, the skirts, and the giants. Interesting. What falls under each category? The neons are a group of tetras that have bright color on some of their body, but have translucent or colorless parts as well. This includes neons, glow light tetras, rummy nose tetras, and many more. Most of them are under an inch long. The royals are much the same, but are usually slightly larger and have bright, solid color all the way through. This includes the cardinal, the emperor, and the rainbow tetras. Wait, that's a neon tetra again. That's a cardinal tetra, Joe. Same colors, but a different species entirely. A straight upgrade to the standard neon. The classic red and blue color covers their whole body. What about the skirts? This is for the thick-bodied skirted tetras. You can easily tell them apart from their body shape. They look like tiny piranhas. Piranhas and Paku are actually the cousins of tetras. Lastly, we have the giants, like the Congo tetra and Buenos Aires tetra. Uh, these ones are pretty colorful and are very large compared to the rest. They get about three inches long. Only you would consider three inches giant. Eat shit. These are the biggest schooling tetras you'll find in a common pet store. Not a terrible way of categorizing them. Where are you with the ranking? The Royal Tetras are top of the line. Easy care, best colors, extremely peaceful, and great schoolers. The Emperor specifically has insane color. There's no reason they shouldn't be next to guppies in S tier. Agreed. Fair enough, but where are you ranking the neons? You were throwing hella shade on them earlier. Probably B tier. Why though? Because the color isn't all there like the Royals. You can't possibly make them fall two tiers just because the color isn't quite as good as an Emperor. I just did, though. I'm going to side with Joe here. There's plenty of different neon and glow light tetras that can fill the role of a schooling fish very well. They have virtually the same advantages as the royals, with a little less color. I'm at A tier. Spit facts, Barack. Oh, fine. Next, the skirted tetras, like the black skirt and serpe. It's a little tough to rank them. They have an issue where they become semi-aggressive if not kept in the right number. Oh, please. What's the worst they could do? They'll chew all your other fish's fins down to the fucking bone, leaving them unable to swim, so they suffocate. Holy fuck. Fin nippers are some of the most annoying fish, especially if you have guppies, bettas, or anything with beautiful flowing fins. Yep. They don't do that if you have a school of them. But it's definitely an issue if a couple of them die off. Their colors aren't anything crazy either. That said, it sounds like they fall to B or C tier. Probably C tier. Much better options. I don't really understand why they're so widely available. You'll find them in every pet store. 
They're cheap and can add a little different body shape to your population. Still not one I go for. C tier is okay. Lastly, what I call the giant tetras, mainly the Congo, Buenos Aires, and Colombian tetras. These tetras have a bit more meat on them and are extremely fast swimmers. They really don't have the intense color of the smaller tetras, but the glimmer of their scales gives them a rainbow effect that is indescribable. They sound pretty dank. I personally love the Congo tetra. I also find it interesting that it comes from the Congo instead of South America like most tetras. You gotta love South American fish. Most of them can withstand San Francisco levels of shit. You shouldn't let your fish tank get that dirty, but it pays to be hardy in this hobby. Anything wrong with these big booty tetras? Here's the thing, they can be just like the royals or neons, but just scaled up. This proves to be too much for the beginner hobbyist. They swim at fast speeds and are required to be at least six in number to keep them happy. I see. So they require a much larger aquarium. And if their social requirements aren't met, they'll go psycho? Exactly. They'll turn piranha real fucking quick on you, especially the Buenos Aires and Colombian tetras. I'd say Congo uh, tetras are easily the best of the giants, but they're much harder to find than the South American variety. Of course, they are a bit larger and faster, so you have to start paying attention to where the rest of your fish are swimming, or you might see traffic. Paying attention to the water column that your fish like to swim at is very important for building a symbiotic community. If you bought all fish that swam at the bottom, it would be a pretty boring tank, to be honest. Right, so it takes a big tank to house them, no less than 100 gallons, in my opinion. That makes them just miss S tier and fall into A tier. Pretty bold to say Congos are an S tier. You could lose some votes that way. I stay keeping it real. You think you're gangster because you went to jail for 20 minutes? I am infinitely more gangster than you or Mr. Dubois over here. And I got to respect the boondocks reference. Are there any more fish? There are a lot more fish. How about let's cover my favorites, Danios and Rasboras. These little guys are the best. They're right up there with the best for colors. There's a ton of options, almost as many as guppies. The Celestial Pearl Danio or Galaxy Rasbora is easily the best schooling fish to keep, in my opinion. I'm definitely ordering a dozen of these for my setup. That's a fish to devote an entire aquarium to. And they're so small that you can keep them in a five gallon easy. Micro tanks don't interest me. I think there's a lot of potential for nano fish. The price tag is a lot lower. Nothing beats keeping a ton of these in a big tank though. The Emerald Tiger Rasbora is another one of the same caliber. After that, there's an endless list of different colors and patterns from both the Danio and Rasbora families. They're basically cousins. I'll shout out the Leopard Danio too. That's a nice one actually. I know, right? Like little leopards in your tank. Is there anything bad about these? I'll say that they're a little sensitive to water changes, but if you're consistent, they can live twice as long as guppies or tetras. That's a starfish in that case. It kind of sucks to buy an entire new tank of fish every year and a half. S tier for the galaxy fish alone. True that. Okay, what about barbs? There's a few different types, just like tetras. There's like three different variants of barb. You got your cherry or rosy barb, your tiger barb, and the denison barb. I keep cherry and rosy barbs in the goldfish tank. They are active little guys. By far the best barbs. There are many different colors and types, like the Odessa or snakeskin barbs that fit the same description. That's a good point. You can lump those in here too. I've heard people keep these outside just like goldfish and koi. True, the rosy barb can adapt to all sorts of different water conditions. My only gripe with them is they can be semi-aggressive toward other fish the same size or smaller. The cherry barb is the smallest, most common, and least aggressive barb available. A or S tier? Uh, they can't really be a, a showpiece fish in your tank, if I'm being honest. These barbs have good side character energy, though. I'll say A tier. Okay, cool. The tiger barb is a bit more difficult. These things are straight up menaces. If you don't have a giant school of them, they terrorize the fins of all others present. Early in my aquarium experience, I got a few of them because they looked cool and they did unspeakable things to my goldfish. Tigers also get pretty big for being a schooling fish, similar to the Congo tetras, but twice as feisty. You can keep them with a few particular types of fish with success. 
and they are quite a beautiful and active fish. I feel like it's a solid C tier. Swim at your own risk. I would be at flush for what they did to Dinkelman. Your goldfish was named Dinkelman? Yeah, Orange Man was taken. Rest in peace, Dink. Now the Denison Barb. I know this one is the Roseline Shark. I had no idea it was a barb. Yeah, it's not a shark. And sharks aren't even sharks in this case. They're all catfish. But it's got the fin, and I hear the Jaws music every time I see one. They do have a similar fin structure, but a barb all the same. This one is larger than the other barbs, but acts much the same as the rosy or cherry barbs. You might see some semi-aggressive behavior if they are kept in the wrong conditions. Like if you use vitamin water instead of tap water? What? what? This dude is in charge of our country. Fuck me. I thought it would give the fish better colors because of the vitamins. And what happened instead? Everything died almost instantly. I had more trips to the bathroom than after dinner at Taco Bell. I'm unsurprised. Even tap water can kill fish without special dechlorinating liquid. Is it the stuff that Donnie said would cure COVID? No, some moron died drinking aquarium cleaner and the media blamed me and not the guy who drank fucking aquarium cleaner. We're getting off track. Where do we land on the denison? Compared to the other barbs, I like the color on them and they seem nowhere near as aggressive as tigers with the only drawback being that they are much bigger so you want to have at least a 55 gallon for them. Barbs generally need members of their own species to be happy or they'll start fucking shit up, so you'll need to have a few of them at least. They're pretty large to have a minimum of three or four. That takes up a lot of space in even a 55 gallon tank. To me, they aren't quite so very interesting to have them be the main species in the tank. It's also kind of hard to find them partly because they're very endangered in the wild. I'm gonna say B tier because one of them got along with my Goldies pretty well. That's definitely not recommended, but I have seen fish tanks running only one of these before. I can agree with the B tier. Sure, now what? Let's just do like 10 more. Maybe some more broad categories when we can. I can talk about fish for 12 fucking hours. There's way too much for one video. So let's just cover the greats. The African cichlids, for example. Top tier color, but they're meaner than Donnie without lunch. Here's the thing about cichlids. They can be the best fish to keep by far. They have the bright color of saltwater reef fish and are actually extremely intelligent. They're able to recognize faces and you'll see behavior that'll amaze you. The only problem is they are extremely territorial and lethal to most other fish, even themselves. That's for damn sure. If you don't raise them up from babies, it's very possible that there will be deadly consequences to introducing adults. I've seen them pick off the weakest fish one by one until there was only one left swimming. It was like Highlander or some shit. That sounds fucking terrible. What if you just have a few in a big tank? You would think that would help, right? It's actually the exact opposite. You need to flood the tank with as many cichlids as you can. Too many fish, not enough territory to claim. It sounds ridiculous, but it's true. The upside is you get a tank full of beautiful fish, the downside being a pretty expensive initial price tag. When it all works, it's priceless. And when it all goes to shit, it's an expensive fish coliseum until you have a single badass gladiator fish left. There's hundreds, if not thousands of species to choose from. Did you know I even have an African cichlid named after me? Does everyone get a fish named after them where you're from? I'm not from Africa, you fucking douchebag. Birth certificate or it didn't happen. Let me see Obama fish. Here you go. Teleogramma Obama orum. That's awesome, he looks just like you. You're an asshole. I wish I had a fish named after me. I actually have a few fish named after me and a couple spiders and even some parasites. I wonder why. All I have is a stupid extinct squid. You got anything, Donnie? I have a legless amphibian that's blind and buries its head in the sand. <laughs> that seems like a scientist took a shot at you and I love it. I hope it goes fucking extinct. I wanna get a Donnie frog worm. I wouldn't mind adding an Obama to my cichlid tank. As far as I know, it's not for sale. I'll get my hands on an Obama, don't worry. With any luck, I'll own a bunch of Obamas. I don't like the way that sounds. All in all, I think African cichlids deserve the S tier. They're mean, and I'd much rather have a goldfish. I'm not gonna say goldfish are better, but I will need to bring them down to A tier due to the initial cost and the complications with aggressiveness. Not particularly a fish for beginners, but fantastic nonetheless. That's an equitable compromise, continue. What about their cousins, the South American dwarf cichlids? Like the ram cichlid? Yes, the rams and also the epistogramma variety. Are they mean? No, they're nowhere near as violent as the Africans. You gotta think about how things sound before you say them. 
but you're right. The South American dwarf cichlids are much less active and aggressive. They basically sit in one spot and stay there. As long as nothing invades their space too much, they're completely peaceful. So they still also have the color and the variety that the African cichlids do, but in a smaller and friendlier package? They usually don't get along together unless it's a male and female, but adding a couple to a community tank is a fantastic addition. They still retain everything great about their cousins, but I prefer their temperament to a large extent. They don't need to be the most numerous fish in the aquarium to be a showpiece. Smart little guys too. The way they look at you in the eye is nothing like a neon tetra or any other fish. You can tell there's more than a few gears spinning in this little fish's head. It's more than I can say for you. Why don't you make like an air stone and blow me? I think these are easily S tier. No doubt about it. Cool, how about a bigger South American cichlid, the Oscar? The Oscars became more interesting with the help of Will Smith. The big boys. Oscars are fairly large at almost a foot long, but not quite so large that they wouldn't fit in an aquarium. They don't need to be housed with anything else. In fact, it might be better that way. Nothing meaner than an Oscar. There's a very limited number of fish that can be kept with it. Goldfish aren't one of them. I will say that the colors on them make it bearable to keep them alone or in small groups. Be careful though. They are every bit as aggressive as the African cichlids, sometimes even more. Where do we rank this asshole? I'm fairly high on them. I realize that they can't be top tier because of their behavior and size, but I don't think they fall down too far. I think since it's a really smart fish that can be your buddy, it can break into B. Oscars being over goldfish is fucking malarkey. Wrong. What about our native cichlids? Like bass and bluegill and shit? Who hasn't kept a little bass they caught in a fish tank? Nothing better than getting a bass or a couple bluegill fattened up before releasing them again. Although that does sound great, technically, it's extremely frowned upon. Taking fish or any animal from its environment and putting it in a human-controlled one has the risk of being exposed to disease. Therefore, releasing it back into the wild can put all the other animals in the environment at risk. How is it going to get diseased in my sterile fish tank? No fish tank is sterile but it's usually from the feeders that we use. What did you feed your pet bass while you had it? Worms, crawfish, and goldfish from the store. Tyrant! There you go. Feeder goldfish are not clean by any means. By releasing that fish, you could have killed all the native species in the body of water, no joke. What is this, some post-pandemic countermeasures? Do all the fish need to wear masks? No, bro, I'm telling you. It's illegal to introduce fish from your house to a wild body of water regardless of where it came from originally. You can still keep a largemouth as a pet, depending on the state, but you simply can never release it again. What if I keep it outside in native water and only feed it native foods? Even then, it's still illegal. No fun. Well, poisoning an entire lake or river system isn't fun either. Are you done being a buzzkill? Yeah, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. With all that being said, our native cichlids are just as colorful and entertaining to watch than any other cichlid thus far. There is absolutely nothing better than watching a bass at feeding time, but largemouth get pretty big. You'll need at least a hundred gallon if you think you'll be able to house one long term. I'd go even bigger if you can. In that case, it doesn't really seem worth it. True, I always kept them with the assumption that I'd release them when they get too big. Now that I know that's not kosher, it's kind of turning me off. Bluegill and sunfish are still pretty cool, though. Still, it's a severe downside to need such a large aquarium for a fish that you know can't be housed with anything you can't catch at the local pond. I'm at D tier, personally. Deficient is OK for them. Nothing outside of a pumpkin seed sunfish is going to match the color of pet store fish. Very good. I have one more cichlid species to cover, the angelfish. Oh, fuck yeah. I was wondering when we would get to these you can't go wrong with a few angelfish. Let's just get the negatives out of the way. Firstly, they're very social and need more angelfish to be happy. Second, they like the water on the very warm side, at least 78 degrees. Those aren't even bad. They have an amazing look with the vertical fins and can be kept with smaller fish with no issues. Lots of colors, very active, a ton of fun. I think we can agree that uh, angels deserve the S tier due to being one of the most recognizable and safest options for a centerpiece fish. Oh, sure. Great for beginners and advanced keepers alike. All right. And how about the dwarf gourami? Gourlami? Like Inglorious Bastards? No, like the thing that looks like a fat beta fish. Oh, yeah. That's a good one, too. Sure, they got great color with orange and blue stripes, but you're pretty much just getting a betta fish with toothpicks for tits. 
they do have a similar behavior to the betta fish, for sure. They also share the hardiness as well. Can I put more than one together? Heavily debated with my answer being not males, and it's a lot harder to tell male from female with this species compared to the beta. Same pros and cons as a beta, might as well toss them in A tier. I'm good with that. How many more fucking fish are we gonna talk about? Let's just do a few more. If you really like this, show us some support. Like and comment, and we'll do a sequel to this video. I wanna do reptiles next. I'm down for that too. Okay. Now let's cover the more advanced fish in this hobby, the discus. They are some of the most beautiful fish you can keep. That's if you can keep them alive. Certainly not for beginners. Not only do they cost an arm and a leg, but they are notoriously sensitive, just like those bitches running the view. You have to be really on top of water changes and have a very specific environment to really get these going. And it's a challenge, but worth it if you have the grit. I like how round they are. It's like raising rainbow frisbees. At least you don't really have to worry about behavior or tank mates with these slow guys, but you need your tank to be almost 90 degrees to keep them happy. You're gonna need a good heater. These things are a pain in the ass and I wouldn't bother with them. Joe doesn't like a challenge. I, for one, have kept these for a time. Was that time longer than a month? Three months, thank you very much. Then I missed one water change to go to a rally and they all fucking died. It's pretty rough, I'll be honest. But how great was that aquarium while you had it? The best! Everybody was telling me what a great tank I had. Uh, there's no way I would put them in the high tiers, but B tier seems like a good spot. I'm with you. Comment if you've had any luck with them. I'm genuinely interested. Let's move on to the rainbow fish. Solid fish, fellows. I've had quite a few over the years. Take it away, Joe. According to our previous judgments, these fish are definitely high tier due to their color, hardiness, and general behavior. I know for a fact Barack is gonna shit on them for their social requirement recommending at least six individuals at their larger size, requiring a larger aquarium and a pricey setup. But otherwise, these are perfect for any community tank that can house at least six fish that can get four inches long and pretty big at that. You're talking about at least a four foot wide tank. You also want their tank mates to match the speed of the rainbows being very fast themselves. A tier seems to be the move here. Am I missing anything? Wow. Holy shit, I've never heard such an in-depth understanding of anything from you. Yeah, the only information I retain fully is whatever these pamphlets in the pet store say about fish I want to buy. Well, that pretty much sums them up. They're great, you just need a big tank, and with that slight limitation of tank mates. They would put guppies in a washing machine, but anything faster or larger than that is fine. Nice one, Joe. We should talk about the fish you see in every fish store that glow in the dark. The glow fish. Pieces of shit. Don't make fun of glow fish. They're pretty cool. I sometimes buy them at the store, but they never look as good at home. You need a specific light to make them glow. They were genetically modified with a protein at the microscopic level in their early development to give off a glowing effect under blue light. Are they dunking these fish eggs in Mountain Dew or something? It was on a starting population of a handful of commonly kept fish. A few tetras, danios, sharks, tiger barbs, and even the betas. I think all of them look tacky and not natural, therefore trash. Some of those are high tiers already. Do we really flush them because of color? I'm with Donnie this time. The whole point of making an aquarium in my mind is to create a natural environment, regardless of if the species are from the same place or not. Reminds me of what used to make America great. A bunch of people from all over the world working alongside one another in harmony. Now it's like someone poured a bunch of tiger barb glowfish in and everybody is getting their fins nipped. I think it was tiger barb glowfish that killed my Dinkelman. They were hot pink. I guarantee you got bullied in school. Flush them. Fine, justice for Dinkelman. It's not like they're any different than where their respective species are ranked now. I just don't like the idea of genetically modified fish when there's so many natural or otherwise selectively bred options. I don't really give a shit about genetic mods. Make red tail catfish three inches and I'll be happy. It's just that they look stupid. I really haven't ever seen a glow fish tank that knocked my socks off. The decorations and gravel made for the glow light doesn't look good whatsoever. Well, we can't end on those. You're right, let's end it on a high note. Let's talk killy fish. That's a proper send off. These guys are super colorful. Any downsides? Not really. In some species, males can squabble over territory and females, but they are not known to be deadly. You need to look species by species for the particulars, but as a whole, they are pretty hardy. 
They don't live quite as long either, just two or three years at most. It's like guppies and others on the list. Sometimes you don't need fish to live a super long time. That makes sense. You wouldn't want your fish to outlive you. I just mean sometimes it's good to change the aquarium up every few years to keep things spicy. How many different killifish can you get? There are many different vibrant colors between the species. You got the clown killi on the smaller side, about one inch, and the rest are about three to five. Not another clown. This clown looks a lot better than the previously mentioned clowns. There are some other good ones like the gardneri and the golden wonder killifish. Killies rival any other fish in the hobby when it comes to color. I absolutely love them dancing around near the surface. I don't see anything wrong with them. Nothing wrong with them at all. Seems like you can find one for most communities. They're sometimes a little hard to find in pet stores, but it's not a bad idea to have these shipped over, worth every penny. Still a starfish nonetheless. All right, are we done here? For now. We are certainly not done with this topic. We didn't even cover catfish, which are the most diverse type of fish kept in the world. There's plenty of fish we didn't get to, so please comment your favorites for the sequel of this video. I hope this serves as a good guide to people trying to put a tank together. Great list, fellas. We're so close to 30K subscribers. It's becoming quite a community tank. Make sure to join us if you enjoyed the video and want to see some more pet-related stuff. Discord in the description, as always. I think they'll be into the aquarium invertebrate or the reptile tier list. Of course, monster fish, and we could even cover dog breeds, too. Sounds good. Until next time, folks. Bye, guys.